should be live on Facebook right now. Hi everybody, welcome to the Strategic Swing Trader. I am Sami Abusad, Director of Education at T3 Live. We're gonna do what we always do, which is go over the market and take a look at some amazing ideas, swing ideas for next week. But as always, before we get started, I have to uh, go over this a standard required disclaimer to let you know that trading is risky and that whatever we discuss today is for educational purposes only. Other thing I want to mention is if you'd like to download a copy of my free ebook, link for that is in the description. And if you find benefit in today's video, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button. That helps support the T3 Live channel on YouTube and Facebook. So without further ado, let's go ahead and turn on the charts and get started. So first, the market. I like to go over the Qs, the SPY, the IWM. It doesn't, they don't look very different except for the IWM, but more or less, we had what I would consider a, a quasi or a pseudo breakout failure, especially you can especially see it on the SPY. So if we break under 416.44, you know, I think we have room to, to drop a little bit, again, especially on the, on the SPY, all the way down to 4.12. This is very tough to to analyze this kind of a breakout failure because we're not very extended, meaning price is not far above the 20 MA on the daily chart. So how much room do we really have to fall? Usually when the when the 20 MA is right there below price, it means you don't have that much room. But I wasn't expecting this breakout failure on Thursday. We had a breakout. Hasn't failed yet. We would need to take out again. 416.44 on the 416, let's say 34, on the SPY, and then on the Qs, we just need to take out 336.90 on this on the Qs, and the same as the SPY. It doesn't have a lot of room, but if we break under this fr Thursday's low, then I would expect at a bare minimum to retest that prior low on the hourly chart, which means that pivot on the daily chart around 334. Okay, around 334 on the Qs. The IWM looks a little different on the daily, but virtually the same thing. We had a pop on Thursday, a gap up that got sold, and now maybe lower to here to 222, maybe eventually to 216, but it's very, very tough to read. I've been saying, you know, every week, the last few, few weeks, I've been coming on saying it's just all out bullish. It's been really bullish. But now it's a little more difficult because we have, and especially on the SPY, we have that pseudo breakout failure there on Thursday. But at the same time, we don't have a, a lot of room to fall. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I gave you kind of the numbers for the for the Qs and the SPY. So the Qs, as I said, under 336.90, we really shouldn't break under if we do then I'd expect to get a retest of this pivot around 334 on the SPY. It's fr Friday's low, which is the same as Thursday's low, only 10 cents different. If we break under 416.34, then I'd expect a drop to, to 412 or so. The IWM already kind of started dropping, but it's again, it's not the easiest uh, charts to read because of the lack of extension. The SPY, I guess, has room to, you can say, I mean, that, not that SPY, the IWM, to 215, 216, which is this pivot down here. So uh, again, I gave you the numbers for the Qs, the SPY, and the IWM. The IWM is not, is, is not as clear as the Qs and the SPY, but barring a break of Thursday's low, basically, if we can just go back up rather than break Thursday's low, then the buy should remain bullish because we're in an all-out uptrend basing at the all-time high. What's not bullish about that? Again, all-time high in an uptrend and basing at all-time high. That's bullish. As long as we don't break under Thursday's low. As long as we don't break under Thursday's low, okay? Now, that's the market um, analysis. Let's take a look at the stocks that I'm looking to play swing for next week. But before we go over the individual stocks, let's talk about Bitcoin, okay? 
Bitcoin had a sell setup on the daily chart last week. I don't know exactly which day, maybe Tuesday, and it failed. See that sell setup failure? So no, that was, yeah, that was Tuesday. Wednesday we got the, the failure, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, and so I'm now looking to get into Bitcoin long. Now the truth is Bitcoin is not the, the, the hottest cryptocurrency right now. There's Ether, there's Dogecoin, there's XRP. Those are much uh, stronger. Um, and uh, and I do have XRP. I, th I think it, uh, I got it on Uphold. Um, I'd have to log in, but oh well. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have to kind of maximize the window there. So I, I wasn't able to figure out where to get um, into XRP because it looked really good uh, until uh, just last week and there's this website that I found that you can get it and I bought 5,500 shares of not shares but coins of XRP on Uphold so you know again there are cryptocurrencies out there that are more, more bullish than Bitcoin but Bitcoin is like the main market and so I like Bitcoin higher if it takes out fifty eight five hundred fifty dollars so fifty eight thousand five fifty if it takes out like it higher with a stop under the green bars low or under the prior the day before that which is around around fifty two three sixty nine okay or just let's just say under fifty three thousand bucks okay on bitcoin uh, i think on the monthly chart of bitcoin i think this month was the first red or i mean you know flat month we've had since it broke out over about 12,000 to 60. This was the first one. So that's a reversal bar, but based on the on the daily sell setup failure, I think we go higher still, based on the daily sell setup failure, okay? Uh, but we may t it may take some time. I don't talk about cryptocurrency every week. Uh, last week I decided not to talk about it because it wasn't interesting. We, we were coming in. Now that we have a sell setup failure, I think it's a lot more interesting to play long if Bitcoin takes out again 58,550 bucks okay um, all right with that said let's now take a look at the individual stocks that I like for tomorrow Monday first we got ADS ADS had a breakout on Thursday and then a narrow range bar on Friday and now if we can take out the highs that will trigger a one two three pattern what I call a one, two, three pattern, which is when you have a base, you have a, a base breakout, and the breakout bar is followed by a narrow range bar that, that stays in the upper third, a resting day basically. And then bar number three is the continuation bar, the trigger bar also, is when we take out the highs of both bars one, the, the breakout bar, and two, the resting bar. And then the bar three would be the entry bar, and you'd get triggered in if the play if the stock takes out again the highs of both bars one and two the stop would be under this bars low so right here okay so i like the ads higher ads the first one on the list CREG. i went back and forth on whether to 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 do it or not it looks good on the weekly looks okay monthly transition a also as a breakout but it's a little sloppy Okay, if you're a subscriber, you want to log on to your T3 Live account and you'll see which stocks I picked for the newsletter and my own account as well. Okay, for tomorrow. Because obviously, I'm not going to be playing every single item on my watch list. Now, some of them are good to go, some of them I think require a little bit of watching, a little bit of stalking. And once they look good, if they look good, then I'll, I'll you know, then I'll play them. But for now, I picked a handful that, I, that I'm that i going to be playing for tomorrow. And if you're a subscriber, you can, you know, log on to your account and you'll see which ones I picked for us. Okay, GME. I don't think that GME is quite ready. Just like Bitcoin, the 20 MA is now below price, which is bullish. When it's above price, you don't want to do it. See this? When it's above, when the 20 period moving average, that blue line is above price, you want to pass on the play. The only exception is when it accelerates, when it drops really hard, that's called a climactic buy setup. The 20 period moving average is always going to be above price at that point, okay? So you can still buy it, but now that the 20 MA is below, pr uh, below price, 
I like GME higher over 188. It has a weekly buy setup. Beautiful weekly buy setup. The only issue is, again, that 20 MA is still flat. So it's not one of the ones that I'm ready, that I'm going to be taking first thing tomorrow, but I'm going to be watching it throughout the week, okay, to play long. MCD, McDonald's, wh wh what do you know? All out bullish at all time highs, has a base breakout, kind of triggered a little bit on Friday, but it's not too late. MCD, long. Uh, NOVN, base breakout, still a declining 20. So it's not my favorite, but over a dollar forty-three long, and target one would be about dollar dollar seventy-five. I thought dollar eighty, dollar seventy-five, and target two would be about two bucks. The stop would be just under the base on the N O V N P M, another boring stock like McDonald's. But what do you know? It's bullish, basing at the daily highs. So it just needs to take out the resistance there with a stop below it. Okay. That's a daily base breakout on the PM. The SEAC or SEAH is a breakout over 1042, I think, with a stop below. And then this one, you know, maybe target one 1080, but who knows? It's a it's a relatively new stock. It might just blow through the all-time high, which is 1085. But that would be kind of the tar target one area, okay? On the SEAH. TAP been in a in a really bearish downtrend for all of 2017 18 19 20 and 20 like many other stocks 2020 it bottomed now this this thing didn't bottom in March it collapsed in March and then it stayed stayed at the lows up until November of last year and then it it bottomed so and now it looks higher okay so I like it. It's got a one, two, three on the daily chart, just over fifty-five seventy-one. Stop would be under fifty-four forty-one. Okay. So a couple of cents, you know, the entry would be one or two cents above fifty-five seventy-one. Stop below fifty-four uh, forty. And last but not least is the WPG. This is one of my favorite patterns. Is when the twenty catches up to price, but price doesn't break, and then you get that curling moving average and it, it causes the stock to break out over 260 on this I like it higher to four bucks okay I don't think it's gonna break out and and go to 16 but to four I think that's that's pretty reasonable to expect okay and that would be you know if it gets to 450 almost a hundred percent pop on the WPG not a lot of bullish items I have a lot more bearish items okay on my list and I looked at my account and I think I have, I had when I looked at the account uh, this morning, I have as many shorts, exactly as many shorts, short positions open as I do longs, even though the market is at the highs. So that shows you there's a lot of a lot more stocks that are looking bearish and breaking down. Otherwise, I wouldn't have. I normally play mostly long uh, when swing trading, and now I have just as many shorts as I do longs. And that tells you that most stocks are bearish, except for, of course, the uh, the mega cap tech stocks, the FANG stocks minus Netflix. But if you look at the FANG stocks, if you look at Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, they got rejected. They all gapped up on earnings, every one of them except for Microsoft. Look at Apple on Thursday, right? Look, Google actually gapped up and held up, but turned into a topping tail bar. Uh, Facebook gapped up and held up, but you know it didn't continue higher. Um, what else? Amazon gapped up, big red bar, just yet on Friday. So you know that's what has led the market up the last few weeks, last few days for sure. Um, and now on the on blowout numbers, they either gap down, Microsoft gap down or gapped up but didn't go anywhere or gapped up and, and dropped. So the market is a little bit tricky right now, I feel. But um, and I, when it's bullish, I tell you. When it's bearish, I tell you. If it's, e you know, if, it, if I can easily tell you, it's, oh, it's bullish or not bullish, then be bullish. When it's really bearish, just be bearish. And when it's in between, that's when you have to, to be a little bit careful. And I think right now, you have to be a little bit careful. And then to make things a little more complicated, Tesla was weak, 
right? Except for Friday. It's as though the money got out of the, the, the tech stocks and into Tesla on Friday. So we have these mixed signals a little bit, and I'm really interested to see what, how, how things play out next week, this week. Okay, on to the list, which, by the way, is in the video description. It is in the video description if you, want, if you don't want to type it up and you just want to copy and paste, which is easier. I already copied the entire list and dropped it into the description. ADVM, which was a wonderful day trade for me on Thursday, okay, After, on that gap down. So gap down and then it put in a doji bar on Friday. So that gives us the one, two, three pattern that I talked about at the start of the video. So short under 378 with a stop, just you know, short under this bar's low, 378, stop would be over 422 on the ADVM. Atom is similar, but the bar didn't stay within the range of the first bar, so it's not perfect. I still like it short under 1550, stop over 1707. This thing moves a lot. Atom moves a lot. I mean, this came from 45 bucks. See it, 47. It looks lower headed to about 10 bucks. It's a very volatile stock, I guess. AVNW. Um, it's a flat 20 on the daily chart, but do you guys see what uh, what I'm looking at? Look at the breakout failure there. Huge breakout failure. Has a sell setup, and if you look at the hourly chart, has a nice, decent base breakdown. So under the base short, stop above it, and you could target, one could target 29 or 28 bucks, or both, target one, 29, target two would be $28. Uh, BX, BX is a climactic sell setup on the weekly chart. See that weekly? Uh, it's not my favorite, but it, uh, we're, one of the open positions for me, it's short, is Dell. Okay, so it's very similar to Dell. Up, and then the doji bar. I went over Dell in last week's video. It triggered uh, sometime this week. I'm not sure exactly which day. So it's an open position, and BX is similar to it on the weekly, and the daily looks lower if we can break under this bar's low first, under 87.70. But it's not as good as Dell, okay? So I'm gonna pass on it. CDE, a lot of the gold stocks I noticed broke down. Uh, a lot of the gold stocks turned bearish. Uh, I did Ego as an earnings play uh, on Friday. This was nice, broke down badly. Look at CDE on Thursday, broke, da broke the trend line. Look at this, broke under this channel here that we've had for a while. So it looks good, short as a one, two, three. Okay, so a lot of the gold stocks are breaking down. So CDE, and if Ego sets up, uh, you know, tomorrow after wide range bar, 75% chance you get a narrow range bar. If it's at, if we get a narrow range bar, like the CDE had yesterday, then on Tuesday, the EGO would, be, would set up as a one, two, three. So I like this one short under $8 by 8.37 as a short. EOLS had a really, really bearish gap down uh, about a week and a half ago, but this gap was not a normal gap. This was a secondary offering, okay? So the company was selling more shares. I still like it lower under 890. If it can break under 890, and I think it, it drops to maybe six bucks, but I would target, target one would be about $7 right here, the gap fill, $7, and then maybe target two, six bucks but I, it needs to always break under support before getting in it. So I like it only if it breaks under 890, okay? GEVO is a sell setup, it's like the AVNO, okay, is a sell setup. So this would be a short under 673, stop over the base, the highest point in the space, which is I think 743, okay, 741. HAE, this one I tried to play long, it did not work as a long, and it's staying at the lows, so I, now I, Changing my bias on it, I'm out of it, of it already. Under the base, stop above it as a short on the HAE. I like it under whatever the lowest point is, and then under it by a few cents. Basically, is how I, how you know, that is how I trade. So under 66.17. In fact, uh, you know, I'm looking at playing it under 66 bucks, the whole number, because this stock is pretty volatile. I don't want to get tagged or triggered by just the spread on it or the you know by a couple cents on it. So I would only play it under 66 bucks if it took out the whole number. ICPT, this is an amazing stock that dropped from 500 bucks, almost, maybe not quite 500, yeah, 497 to $20, and guess what? It still looks lower. 
This is why you cannot get married to stocks. You can't because sometimes they go to zero. That's why. So this thing I'm looking to short. Um, it looks very good if it can break under uh, the base here, which is 1950. Now, the issue with it is there's two places to place the stop, to put the stop. One would be right here, just over Friday's high. Safer, a lot safer would be over the base. And that's what I'm going to go with. If I do short the ICPT, then the stop is going to, I'm going to use 2189 as my stop above it. Okay. So, you know, this way it, I don't get shaken out easily. INO is a sell setup. And notice again, INO, where did it come from? Look at that. From 30 something dollars at the end of last year, towards the end of last year. This year it was at it capped to 19. I don't know what that number is. Exactly 19. Where is it at now? 680. And it still looks good short under seven, 675. Okay. As a sell setup. And then what's the target on it? I don't know. I'd have to look at the monthly. Believe it or not, it has room to like $3 or so. Let's just say, you know, initially to four or maybe five. Just the start of the smooth. Okay. But it has, who knows where it could end up dropping to. It looks lower if it can break under 675 tomorrow. Uh, IONS, I O N S, as a short, I like it. I like it on the hourly chart, especially on the hourly chart. Under the base, stop above it. And the target is the prior pivot low, which is around $39, maybe slightly higher than $39. Yeah, $39.25 would be the target on the I O N S. P I N S, P I N S, gap down on Wednesday. Thursday and Friday were kind of narrow range bars. And I like it short if it can break under 65.36. 65.36, stop over the green bars high. Okay, and then target 60 bucks on the uh, PINS. Peloton, bearish also, a little bit sloppy, I would say. But PTON looks lower if it can break under uh, 95.50, 96.50. Stop would be over 101, 101.40. And I don't know where the target is. I mean, it has room to here, to 60 bucks, maybe $70, let's just say. It has room to about $70 on the PTON. A QS, all the, the electric vehicle stocks, I think all of them with the exception of Tesla, look lower. QS, sell setup. Ride, sell setup. Workhorse, sell setup, slash breakdown. XL, sell setup. XPEV, sell setup, you name it. Maybe they uh, also the NEO doesn't. I think the NEO got bought. Yeah, NEO is not so bearish. Uh, NEO and Tesla don't look as don't look like the other ones. Um, so I got a bunch of them here that I like: QS, Ride, XL, XPEV, Workhorse. Obviously, you know it's a very tight niche. I'm not gonna take all five short. Okay, first I'm gonna take only the ones that trigger. But even from the ones that trigger, you know I I'm taking a couple. So if you're a subscriber, as I said, you can wait for the email to go out tomorrow before the market opens or log on to your T3 Live account and you'll see which ones I picked for the newsletter and my own account. All right. With that said, everybody, this was kind of a longer video. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find benefit in these weekly videos that I do. If you'd like to check out my services, the links in the description or send an email to info at t3live.com. And if you haven't